Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Thank you for your extended uh, patience as we uh, got ready here. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to Worth Heights Community Center here in Southeast Fort Worth, District 9. Our great council member here, Ann Zeta, is here with us today. I want to welcome you to our Community Development Week celebration. Uh, as you know, this week is National Community Development Week, where we celebrate the work of those in community development that make our neighborhoods and our cities stronger here. Uh, my name is Aubrey Thaggard. I'm the Director of Neighborhood Services for the City of Fort Worth. The Neighborhood Services Department is charged with overseeing all of the programs that deal with housing, community development, as well as social services here in Fort Worth, and might I also add for a portion of Tarrant County. So we have the responsibility of helping meet the needs of our, <clears throat> excuse me, of our most vulnerable citizens, whether they be those who are senior citizens, our young children, those living in poverty, individuals who are suffering from chronic illnesses such as HIV and AIDS. We are here to help provide the services or the funding for those services so that these individuals can lead a productive life here in this city. As I stated before, we have a number of uh, dignitaries here today, including our council member, Ann Zeta. We also have here with us one of our state representatives, the Honorable Nicole Collier. And we'll be joined shortly by Congressman Mark Vesey, who represents our city as well on Capitol Hill. I also want to recognize uh, members of our staff from Neighborhood Services. Stand up, raise your hands, let them know that you're here today. I know who you are, so raise your hands. <laughs> And then also, I want to thank, um, I guess we had a committee this year of sorts, so uh, I believe we have uh, Sarah Burkett on our staff, um, Michelle pentaleo Clough, who was also on the committee. Who else was on the committee this year, I believe? It was uh, Chad LaRoque and, and Sharon Berkeley. So I want to thank all of you for your hard work in pulling this together today. Also, I want to recognize organizations, many of whom are our partners who have uh, worked with us over the years. We've provided funding for these services, to, and uh, we will see that there are uh, stations set up here that we would like for you to, to uh, stop by and visit while you're here today as well. We want to thank you all for coming today. Today is um, one of those days where you kind of go like, well, what do you say about this type of event? Last year, this time, we were concerned about the continued existence of programs such as our community development block grant funds and our other funds from HUD, our, our funds from housing, I'm sorry, from uh, health and human services, for instance. We were all worried, concerned about as to whether or not those funds were going to remain intact, whether they were going to get, get reduced or get eliminated totally. We've had that same fear earlier this year, but when you have clouds and you have some rain and storms, eventually they give way to sunshine. And what has happened so far is good news for us on Capitol Hill here. I was hoping that Congressman Vesey would be here by now to hear these, these comments because it's obviously a testament to he and other members of Congress and the work they've been doing here. And you just, well, it's just from the perspective of the HUD funds here and the increases that we saw. Back during the last recession, the Great Recession, just as I was getting ready to sing some accolades, the congressman walks in here. Great timing and welcome. But back at the Great Recession, there was a 25% reduction in funds from HUD, from our Housing and Urban Development Department. But the current bill that's out there, we're talking about increases that we have not seen in decades, where you're talking about for CDBG alone, where it's at 300 million to 3.3 billion, that's billion with a B, dollars, home funds that help us to provide affordable housing here in the city. 412 million is current funding level, but they're talking about an increase of 1.36 billion dollars. HAPA, our Housing Opportunities for People with AIDS, from 19 million to 375 million. Housing assistance, I'm sorry, homeless assistance grants an increase in funding from 130 million to 2.5 billion. These are substantial increases, increases that we have not seen 
like I said, in decades in terms of the level of funding here. And it's all because of the hard work of our legislative team on Capitol Hill in particular, Congressman Mark VC here. So with that, I'm gonna step aside because we have the Congressman here now and we would love to hear from him about his work on Capitol Hill fighting for us here in Fort Worth. So with further ado, Congressman Mark VC. Uh, it's great to be with everybody. How's, how's everyone doing today? Good, good. Well, um, I just want to just quickly just talk about the importance of what you're here doing, particularly talking about issues like affordable housing. Uh, that is definitely something that I'm always concerned about. Uh, as many of you know, the district that I represent includes Dallas County uh, and uh, Tarrant Counties. And particularly, I can tell you, uh, I have neighborhoods that I represent in Dallas County in particular where the housing issue has, the housing has just gotten very, very expensive. Uh, and it is my hope uh, that we can continue uh, to come up with good programs and continue to work with neighborhoods and communities, particularly on the affordable housing issue. One of my biggest fears is that people that live in cities uh, will no longer, that have grown up in certain neighborhoods and, that, and have grown up to know in a city will no longer have viable housing options in, in those areas. Uh, and I think that uh, as more and more cities tend to grapple with that, as, as new businesses come in uh, and there's job growths, like how you go about tackling those issues, I think is critically important. Uh, and with so many of the cuts that are taking place uh, right now in Washington, D.C., uh, throughout many of our departments to where really, I mean, we're are, you know, well past the year into the administration now, and there are even some agencies that are not even completely staffed up yet. Uh, and we know that... Um, uh, that some of those things really lead to, to certain challenges. And there are people out there that really have some very real needs that are out there. Uh, and so, um, you know, it's my hope that this for the remainder of this year uh, and next year, uh, that we really work together uh, to just tackle uh, some of these things and really take a closer look at them and really figure out some sort of way how to shed light to the public on how important some of these programs are too. Uh, because when I go out and, and about it I'm and I'm in the community, a lot of people really don't know. Um, I think that if you're directly uh, affected, um, like for instance, let's say that you're that you're a Section 8 voucher, for instance, if you're directly affected by that, and you're and that particular component in housing uh, is important to you, then you you understand the 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 need and the urgency. But for a lot of average, everyday people out there, a lot of the work that you're here doing today, they just really, they, they, they don't know. Uh, they, they really don't understand. Uh, and, uh, and, and how we can go about talking about some of the services that are being provided here today and how they affect everyone's lives each and every day, um, I think is, is very crucial. I see that Meals on Wheels is one of the organizations uh, that is represented back there. And I know that when we had certain, uh, when, when they were going to lose some of their funding, I think people were really sort of shocked by that. I think that they thought that that was a 100% com completely volunteer effort and a 100% completely uh, volunteer uh, organization. And they had no idea that there were like critical funds that were coming uh, from the federal government that quite frankly, if it weren't for an organization like Meals on Wheels, a lot of those seniors would, would go the entire day without even speaking to anyone because that's really their only contact uh, with uh, the, the, the outside public. Uh, and so uh, again, just thank you for letting me have a, a few moments to speak. I uh, really appreciate that uh, very much and, and glad that everybody has gathered here today to, to just uh, really spread some good information. Thank you. Once again, Congressman, thank you so much for uh, being with us this afternoon, and thank you for your support and leadership on Capitol Hill in Washington. Here. But not only do we have uh, strong leadership and representation on Capitol Hill in Washington, we have it at the state capitol in Austin as well here. And one of our best advocates here in Fort Worth is none other than our state representative, Representative Nicole Collier. So I'd like for Representative Collier to come forward. Thank you, Aubrey. You know, this is such a, a great uh, opportunity for us to gather together to recognize the Community Development Block Grants. It's not easy to get these grants. There's a lot of things that you have to go through. You know, you hear about the bureaucratic uh, paperwork and the bureaucratic uh, 
you know, stuff that you have to do. And there's a lot of it. There's so many factors that go into applying for these community development block grants. But it's so worth it because it does so much for our community. This is a real partnership, these community development brand, uh, grants, because not only are you working with housing, but you're also working with law enforcement, you're working with the schools, and you're doing so much coming together as a partnership to make these grants possible. I get so many calls from constituents who, talk, who call in, and uh, I represent a district that's similar to Congressman Vesey, and uh, it's an urban district, and we get people who call in and say, you know what, my roof is leaking. I can't get my roof fixed. Help me, what can I do? So I call Catholic Charities and I'll call um, Housing Solutions. And you know what? They have the funding to help with that, pay, to pay for those roofs, to help somebody get the roof if they qualify. So not only are they improving areas of blight, but they're also helping the individual homeowner to improve their home. So I really appreciate all of the work that you're doing to make sure that these things can happen. And when we're talking about being able to afford homes, this, these programs do that. They put the home ownership within reach of individuals. And I wish my niece could have been here because I was just telling somebody, I said, I saw this program online. I, I looked it up and I looked up at the city of Fort Worth and I saw that they were holding this program and I said, niece, you gotta go to this. I want you to go to this. I didn't even realize I was gonna be here speaking at this. I had already been here to speak, but uh, I was telling her, you gotta go. She asked me, she goes, how do I, what is the first step that I need to do to get a home. So many people ask that same question. You've got the answers right here. Right here today, you've got the answers. You've, you've teamed up with other organizations that has the information to help somebody make a decision about how they can become a homeowner. Everybody wants a piece of that dream. Everybody wants to own. Everybody wants that opportunity to have something of theirs. And you are bringing that to them. And so because of the work that you're doing, I can tell you that Texas is better and House District 95 is better, and we're all better because of it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Representative Collier. And to let your niece know, she can call the Neighborhood Services Department, 817-392-7540, and we will put her in touch with the people who can help her get started on her odyssey towards becoming a homeowner here. As Representative mentioned, you know, we do more than just deal with the housing here. We're talking about individuals and the services that they need here. When you're talking about transportation for people, uh, for seniors to get to um, some of our centers, such as this one here. Uh, we also provide opportunities for our youth through various programs. Girls Inc., I think, is one of the programs that we've funded over the last few years here. At one time, we were providing childcare assistance. So these are the type of programs that have a much broader span of impact in this community most people realize here. What we're doing is providing that needed gap. We're standing in that gap for people between abject poverty and creating an opportunity to get them towards self-sufficiency here. So we're very much a part of what the community needs here. Uh, to my staff uh, who work tirelessly towards making this a possibility here, they understand the importance of this work here. As a matter of fact, this month, we're going through a process, a notice of funding availability, and all of the organizations that have submitted funding, we know that there is more application than money. So staff is taxed with the responsibility of having to sit through and review applications and ask the probing questions and come back and make the recommendations. And we have a great community development council made up of laypersons who sit in uh, listen to these various applications and ask the questions that are needed and staff makes recommendations and then what happens every year in June we come to the council and say council this is what your community is looking for in terms of investment with these type of funds here and one of the people well, that's responsible for making that decision and taking those recommendations into consideration as we do every year is our council member here in District 9 and that's Councilmember Ann Zeta. So if Councilmember Zeta would come up, give us a few words, that'd be great. Thank you very much. I am impressed with your ability to stand up and speak off the cuff. 
Um, a few of the things that I've been asked to talk about are specific things that we've done in District 9. So I do have a few notes, if you'll forgive me. And I try to blow them up big enough to not use my readers, and I have not succeeded at that. At the end of the day, typically my eyes have started to fail me in that area. But I did want to mention a couple of the organizations that the city has partnered with, with the funding that's provided through these community development block grants, which I always say spelled out like that, because when you try to say those initials, I mess it up every time. So community development block grants and home investment partnership programs have provided some formulas for funding in the city of Fort Worth that has been incredibly successful. And some of the public service agencies that we have worked with have been Catholic Charities, Housing Channel, The Ladder Alliance, Reach, Girls Inc., as was mentioned previously. Um, we've also done, in District 9, some affordable housing projects, including 250 Lancaster, which is the apartments ab above the Pinnacle Bank project on Lancaster in downtown Fort Worth. Hunter Plaza, also located in downtown Fort Worth. And Knights of Pythias is also in downtown Fort Worth. And in addition, we've worked on some individual streets throughout the south side specifically. I am blessed with neighborhoods in the south side who have passionate volunteers who have availed themselves of the knowledge of this type of funding and have partnered with the city and really advocated for their own neighborhoods, identifying needs in their own neighborhoods, advocating for their own as a group, as a neighborhood group, um, and really speaking for a broader um, voice in the neighborhood um, beyond just the individuals and their needs. Um, advocating for those people who need that roof to be fixed, but advocating also for streets that need to be repaired, for community um, resources that need to be available, um, improvements to parks, Caps Park, for example, in the South Hemp Hill Heights neighborhood has a very passionate group of folks working to um, get those funds available that are already available, designated, and get those projects con completed um, and bring those assets to those neighborhoods. So this has been a very important part of my work in District 9, uh, representing as, as the two, these two um, representatives also a very urban area in the city. As improvements come to that area, as reinvestment occurs, it is our adamant desire to make sure that citizens who've lived in those areas can continue to live in those areas and have that cross-section of housing availability so that they can make those choices to live there, so that you have a diverse group of people living in an area, a diverse group of people from race, culture, age, people who've lived there for a long time, people moving into the area, and then young people who want to come back and be able to live in the communities that they were raised in by their families. So these are all very important things that we work on to try to make sure that we have those resources available to our communities and that we have strong, vibrant communities that are fully engaged and involved. So I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I know this is a week-long event, so hopefully this will be a kickoff that we'll get the word out about. People will know which organizations to reach out to and we can continue to be that partner alongside those individuals and those agencies and the representatives that are here today. So I appreciate the opportunity as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Zeta, and thank you to all of our elected officials here today. Uh, before you go, though, we want to kind of basically show our, our appreciation to you for all of your hard work and efforts here. And we just wanted to give you a little token of that appreciation. So with that, I'd like to call uh, first, Congressman Mark VC. And I'll, I'll, read, I'll read the uh, inscription on the plaque here. It says to Representative Mark VC, 33rd District of Texas, an appreciation, special appreciation for your support for National Community Development Week, April 2nd, 2018. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then we also have the same for our state representative, Nicole Collier. And last, but certainly not least, our Council 9 district member, Ann Zeta. Thank you. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
So as you have heard from all of our speakers today, we're trying to place successful building blocks in these communities because when you take even your weakest community and make them stronger, you're making a stronger Fort Worth here. And with that, we can create the type of city that's an example for other cities across the nation. Fort Worth is the 16th largest city in America. And in a few years, we'll probably be somewhere around 14th or 13th when it's all said and done. And we're a continually large area that's growing uh, roughly at the pace of about 2,500 roughly 2,500 residents every month. We're the fastest growing large city with a population over 500,000 in the United States of America. So with that comes not only the growth and seeing the numbers, but it also increases the need. So programs like this continue to help fulfill those needs of individuals and communities here, whether it's the infrastructure, buildings, homes, people, those are all the things that make strong, vibrant communities. And by helping the least of those, we're doing the most for our city here. So with that, I want to thank you all for coming out this afternoon. Uh, we have our uh, various uh, organizations that are out here, Tarrant County Homeless Coalition, 60 and Better, AB Christian Center, Meals on Wheels, uh, the Ladder Alliance, Goodwill. Please, if you have not had a chance to stop by one of the tables in addition to the City of Fort Worth's tables, Please do so. And again, thank you for coming out this afternoon. And let's continue to work to make Fort Worth the best managed, best city, period, in the United States. Thank you. <laughs>